It's all about the Aussie dollar and, of course, the RBA. In less than 30 minutes, uh, we will get that all-important RBA case rate decision. We are going to take you live now to Carson Scott, who's outside RBA headquarters. He's joined by Mark Bailey from Fig Securities. Over to you, Carson. News. Leanne, thank you so much. Uh, welcome to a wet, not so windy, but a very wet uh, Reserve Bank forecourt. Mark Bailey from Equasia, welcome to you. Uh, lots of push-pull factors. Just that trade surplus story that's uh, a better-than-expected one goes some way today to offsetting what was a disappointment on the retail sales front, even annualised, 2 point something percent off. So not looking rosy there, but it's all about macro pru, is it not, by the Reserve Bank, and perhaps some commentary on that today. Yeah, I think you'd be looking for some commentary on the uh, on the macroprudential uh, regulations. Also, let's not forget as well the uh, financial uh, stability review comes in next Thursday as well. So you probably see a bit of commentary around that as well. But it's going to be interesting to see, and I think they're going to have to sit on their hands to wait and see what actually happens, what the impacts are of this macroprudential. Obviously, focusing very much on the interest only part, reducing that to 30% of the the books. And they, historically, that over the last 12 to 18 months, that's been running at around about 40 to 42%. Wow. So there's going to be a bit of an impact there. Let's face they had a choice just a week or so ago when they made that announcement as to whether they would have further clamped down on the investor loan book part of the the, uh, the market. Now, Shane Oliver from Mampi Capital Investors saying today it should have been a 5% threshold. 10% let them off uh, with a smile and some. Uh, is it too little too late? Has the horse bolted? And with these prices now at such elevated levels, it, it's it's quite difficult to get it get it back. And and again, look, I think macro potential is the right way. We were talking about it last month when we were sat in the same place. Um, I think that's the, the right way to do it. It's still a fairly blunt tool. And then, will they go down to you know postcode specific? You know, because you've got you've got home builders in Western Australia complaining about the macro potential well, tools. Fourth largest home builder there saying this is really the, the most unwelcome of use. A exactly. So. You know, do you actually get into the actual specifics of postcode, very similar to New Zealand, where you were targeting specific markets? And I think potentially that is going to be down the line. I think the RBA is going to be pretty reluctant to do that, though. And it's interesting because the Treasurer has shown a willingness uh, to be uh, selective when it comes to tax reform uh, with that $50 million cap essentially for small business to try to foster that. But equally on the other side of the divide, people are saying it's distortive of the market. It'll create a disincentive to grow above that level. So if they can do it on the fiscal footing, is it a bar to say uh, macro does the same way that, that the, um, the, you know, the, the monetary policy does the same sort of a selective ring fencing? Look, I, th I think you can do it, you know, and you've, you've seen the uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand do exactly the same. So, you know, there are blueprints. I think, you know, the, the regulatory authorities here, whether that's APRA, ASIC and the RBA together, will be probably reluctant to go down that path. They've historically been reluctant to use macro credentials. So, you know, it's kind of a, a slow course down that trajectory. Mm. But I think, you know, the, the, the Australian market is so different in different different regional centres and different regional capitals that you have to do that. Go global. Let's look at the 10-year in the US. Uh, let's wonder to ourselves uh, the cost of funding for the big four. Out of cycle moves now look uh, a when, not if scenario f moving forward. Uh, how does that story in, the f in terms of the Fed and pricing by bond markets there sway now our big four in the next six months? Look, I mean, it, it, bizarrely, the, the actual 10-year U.S. Treasury has actually rallied. So the yields come down. So it's actually pretty close to its uh, the bottom end of the 232-63 range. So elevated so funding costs look a little bit uh, sort of a, a anachronistic to call that one out. Yeah, look, I'm not, I'm not sure that, that you know, they have increased significantly over the last six months. Um, but you are going to continue to see the outer cycle because you you're continuing to see... Uh, net interest margin compression and you've got to remember it's the overall cost of the book not just the marginal cost that they're putting on so some of the lo some of the longer dated stuff maybe was done at, at better financing rates but I think potentially overall you are seeing slight increases in cost of funding. I mean seven bips and some as they creep higher ain't going to essentially bring the RBA out of hibernation to cut though are they? No, no. But it's an offset? No, I don't, I don't think so, not yet and I think the, obviously the key one is on the homeowner variable and that's a, that's a key one that they will probably look at but if it continues it will certainly skew the RBA towards more more cutting. The argument and Phil Lowe referred to this one of his first speeches for this year as governor saying look we do have tools to uh, to paraphrase put foam on the runway a la a Tim Geithner style response after things burst but would you concede that the rate of house price appreciation in the key capital city markets Sydney and Melbourne is such that there is a lot now more of a pain factor to factor in were we to fall in other words these falls could be felt as being more precipitous than had otherwise been the case if we hadn't run up to this extent 
Yeah, look, I mean, house pricing in Australia has always been a puzzle to me. You know, I came, I came to Australia 10 years ago and, you know, started renting and, you know, couldn't, couldn't accept that the house prices are where they are, but they are, and they've gone up probably, you know, 20 30% in the last three or four years. So they're continuing to run away. They're continuing to see demand. And, you know, as a, an offshore investor, like whether you're a U.S. hedge fund, you just don't understand the dynamics in the, in the market. You know, you think it's a big country. There's plenty of land to build on. But, you know, house prices have got away, and it's, it's a case of how do you prick that bubble without causing it to, to completely blow up. What about a Vancouver-style uh, tax on foreign investments uh, to the tune of about 15-odd percent? That did certainly uh, pull back price action in that market. To your point, though, you don't want a, a crash. You want a measured, orderly uh, decline, move yeah. back from here. Would that be another tool option? Look, it's, it's, it's obviously a tool option. I'm, I think the Chinese investor is a bit of a Furby. Well, not just Chinese, but just no, offshore investors no, per se. Uh, yeah, but generally off, offshore investors. I, I don't think they're the, one of the key determinants. Maybe the, the margin, and maybe that's what's driving the prices. But I think it's just the demand for, for housing from, from locals. You know, whether they, you know, like, like myself, who's you know, got an Australian passport recently, you know, am I more, more entitled to buy than somebody else? Uh, you know, and that's the debate. And I think that, you know, house prices, I agree, have run up rather rapidly and probably too fast too quickly but the stories of people collapsing at auctions you know out of the, the sheer will and frustration that mounts as that needle moves ever higher i mean quite a startling live uh, scenario is it not you, know, you would collapse from all that activity it is but you know people that have been through that you know the saturday mornings that you kind of waste seeing houses going to auctions everything else testing the market you know it, it, it is quite emotionally draining and physically draining as well so yeah, I, I can understand that 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 that, uh, that kind of uh, collapsing. But you know, at the end of the day, house prices are continuing to increase. We're not seeing any pullback. We had some strong house price data again, uh, again this week and last week. So, you know, the, the, that that is a con key concern for for the RBA, and uh, that's what you see in the macro potentials trying to uh, to prevent uh, further house price increases. We've got the buzz finally, the buzz of construction around us here in Martin Place, and under the canopy there of the latest to rise from the ashes proposition you've got commerce going on the problem is it's free this talks to the services economy does it not these are homeless people admittedly I'm not sure whether you can even pan around to show uh, showcase what is now a fairly established uh, part of modern place on that measure does that some kind of a metaphor for the shift from uh, you know, a, a, a mining boom to a services you know flop to that degree i mean there's no pricing power even on display here they're giving it away yeah look i think it's a fairly long bow to draw but i understand kind of where you're coming from whoa okay that's right <laughs> and <laughs> in terms of um you know the service economy and um you know but i think it highlights the fact that a lot of businesses are still doing it tough and are still uh, you know not finding it easy i think if you go anywhere around uh, you know australia no, nobody's really knocking the ball out of the park, and I think that's part of the problem that the RBA is seeing, that you know, the retail sales yeah. you know, highlighted that. It's still tough in the real economy, and you're not seeing the jobs growth, part-time versus full-time, no wage growth. So it's a, it's a pretty um, yeah, tepid backdrop. And you say they will cut, not today, but just your prediction finally, when might it be Melbourne Cup Day, November? Yeah, potential, maybe even a bit before, maybe August. But I, th I think, you know, that the... the, the Australian economy will demonstrate that it is it is it's still on weak weak ground and on a weak footing, and that uh, you know the ne the next move is 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 further cuts. And I know I know that's non-consensus, but you know, and the RBA is continuing to talk very positively, glass half full. Um, so you know, we'll probably need some pr pretty weak inflation data to, to 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 trigger that. Watch this space. Thank you so much for the setup to today's show. Appreciate it. There she goes again. We'll get some sandbags at the ready uh, in the event, as we might have predicted. The wind and the rain, but a little bit of our sun peeks its way through those clouds. And Leanne and